I am so happy that you're here. Today is our official first DIY of 2021, because last week was my DIY review. Which, by the way, can I just thank you all for your comments? I was so nervous when I released that video because, man, really went for it with the honesty there. Um, and I didn't know if it was gonna backfire. So thank you so much. Your comments really meant the world to me. I know that I don't know any of you personally, but I really feel like I do. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for those of you that are new, my name is Orly Shani. This is the DIY designer. I do killer high-end DIY fashion and home decor. Uh, the techniques might not be high-end, but the end result sure is. And today is no exception. So let's discuss. I am obsessed with fall and winter fashion. It's like my favorite season for fashion because there's hats and scarves and accessories and coats and boots and cozy sweaters. Like there's just all these extra little pieces that we get to incorporate into our wardrobe when the weather starts to get cooler. Obviously I live in LA. When I'm talking about winter, I'm talking about like 50 degrees. Um, so I don't like to invest in too many legit winter things because they're gonna spend most of the time in storage. So I had an idea. I have been completely in love with these fur collar and cuff coats like this and like this and like this and like these. And I literally went down a rabbit hole and I just wanted them all. Clearly I'm not gonna buy them, not only because they are crazy expensive, but also because like, uh, it's a statement. And to like have that, it's not gonna be my main jacket and, and I don't have the storage for it. So this is what I thought would be really cool. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a detachable, magnetic, faux fur collar and matching cuffs that can go on any jacket, be interchanged, swap a -roo, put it on this one, put it on that one, take it off, roll it up in storage. It will instantly transform a jacket like this into this or like this into this, or like this into this, or even like this into this. Now the best part is all of these can be swapped. So you get like 20 jackets in one. It's super, super simple to do and it's magnetic. And the magnets that I am gonna link below, I really recommend. Now, just a disclaimer, they are crazy strong. Like I'm talking, be careful. Not only are they really strong, so they can go through many layers of thick fabric, but they're really low profile. They're super, super thin. You're not even gonna know it's there, but it's strong enough to hold. Um, okay, I think that is it. I am going to um, get right into materials so we can do this. I'm really excited, it's a really fun one and so useful. Okay, let's get going. Alrighty, here we go. So if you wanna use a particular jacket as your pattern or you want it to fit your jacket specifically, you're gonna need some either pattern paper, wrapping paper, whatever you need, just large scratch paper. And you're gonna lay your jacket out. You're gonna open up the collar so it's laying flat and just start tracing it. Trace across the outline of the jacket and then kind of reach in and follow the guide all the way around the corner. And you can see it doesn't really look like anything specific, but this is going to be my pattern, not only for this jacket, but this is actually the one that I end up wearing on that leather jacket where I've got the sort of cowboy hat-ish situation. Cut out your pattern and put it off to the side. Now, this is actually a fur collar that I had made previously when I had a clothing line. So I thought I might as well use this as a pattern. I basically laid it flat. You can do this with a scarf that you already own. Lay it flat and that's, you can see, like it's this slight curve. It's barely a curve with the angle on the top. So I made that pattern piece and now I moved on to this jacket. I don't end up liking the actual pattern I make off this jacket, so I end up using the first one I did, but I do wanna show you how to do this kind of notched situation. The problem here is that what I did is I actually created the pattern to incorporate the part of the jacket that folds inside. So you'll see in a minute, I didn't really love the way it was laying. I would recommend writing where the seam is gonna go because these are half patterns. They'll get connected in the back of the neck. Sometimes the patterns don't look like anything when you're done, so just mark where the seam is. I went downtown to get some faux fur fabric. Now, there were a million options, but I had something really specific in mind. I wanted that sort of natural, creamy, faux shearling look, and I didn't really find what I wanted. I did find this, and I was like, I think I can make this work. I don't know, I, I didn't end up being completely in love with it. In this lighting, it looks super yellow. It doesn't actually look this yellow in real life. But what I thought is I could cut off those extra long hairs and end up with a texture I liked more. So you're gonna look at your fabric. You wanna figure out which direction you actually want the fur to go. Once you decide that, flip it to the backside and trace out your pattern. 
Now this is insanely important, you guys. You do not cut through the fur completely. You only wanna cut through the fabric backing of the fur. So either use a really strong X-Acto knife, I tried but mine was too dull. So if not, grab your very strong fabric scissors and sort of like run it along the edge. You can see I'm like pushing it along the edge, making sure to not cut the fur but only cut the back. You actually don't have to be super precise with this. As long as you're focusing on cutting the back, you'll see that no fur gets anywhere. Like nothing. You don't have hairs flying around, stuck in your nose, all over your house. It sort of just pulls it apart. Not only does that help because it doesn't make a mess, but it also makes the fur look more natural because there's no blunt edges. So this is how it was looking. And you see that part? That's the part I was saying. I incorporated it into the pattern and I don't know, like I just didn't love it. I kept looking at it and like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could have worked. I end up basically tossing this and not using it. But just so you guys can see, you need to cut another one. When you cut your second one, make sure that you flip your pattern so that it's mirrored. That way the direction or the texture of the fur will look even on the right and left side of your jacket. So just flip it over and then trace it out and cut it out the same way. Now, this is where I went outside because this is going to get all over the place. And I tried to cut the longer sort of Furs. I wanted something a little bit shorter. I thought it would look more natural. So I just went in there and started snipping it. I tried to do them on an angle so that they wouldn't have like blunt edges. And I basically just like snip, 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 snip. I was really careful at first. And then I realized I could go a whole lot faster and a lot less precise and it was going to be fine. And you can see that's the difference. It still has a similar look, but it just doesn't have those really long straggly hairs, which I didn't like. So this is where I'm at and I end up cutting everything I use with this fabric this way. Now, it is time to sew the neckline together. So you wanna take your two pieces and do them face to face and you wanna push all of the fur down inside so that it's not like stuck in the seam. You can use a needle and thread, you can use a sewing machine, but if you use a sewing machine, make sure that you do it on the loosest stitch your machine will allow. That's gonna prevent all the furs from getting like stuck so that you don't see a seam. See how those stitches are really loose? When I open it up, you're not even gonna be able to tell where the seam was because I didn't actually tack down any of the fur. I just tacked down sort of that very top part of the fabric. See, you can't even see it at all. Perfect. Okay, so again, I don't even end up using this one, but I was still trying to save it. So I thought maybe I could cut off that little corner that goes wrapped into the jacket. I tried doing it. You'll see in a minute, I put it on my other leather jacket trying to see like, could it work on this? I think there is a way to salvage it. I just wasn't into it in the moment, but I do think I'm gonna try to recreate this one at some point. So here is that um, version that I did on my leather jacket. Same exact thing goes for all of these guys. You put the pattern down, the direction you want it to go. You do two of them, cut both of them out at the same time, um, making sure to only cut the fabric and not the fur itself. And now this is where I am folding over about one inch of the fur onto the backside and tacking it down. This is going to clean finish it so that when I'm actually wearing it, you're not gonna see the cut edge of the fabric. You're just gonna see fur no matter where you look at it. The whole thing on the backside is sort of rolled over and lined so that when you're wearing it from the front, you only see fur and you don't see any fabric. So that's about it. And it's time for our magnets. Now these are the magnets I have linked below. They have like warning labels on them because they are super, super strong. And if you have them close to each other, they will find each other and like crash into each other. What you wanna do is put your uh, collar on with a couple different jackets and figure out where you would want the actual magnets to go. On this particular one, I wanted it on the outer corners. So that's why it's not centered. I'm adding some E6000 to the back of it. You could also do the like E6000 hot glue combo if you wanna wear it right away. So here is that beautiful fabric. Now, what I realized with this is that I actually don't wanna go with the grain like I did on the other one. So if you see, that's the grain. It sort of lays flat and, and doesn't have texture. I don't like it. So by doing it on the side, it naturally has texture because it kind of falls away from the natural direction. So there is my pattern. You can see I laid it down. I traced both, mirrored them. Now I'm cutting them out, making sure to only cut the fabric. And look, no fur is all over the place. It's perfectly clean and it's looking really cool. Cut out both of them, and then I'm gonna connect them right there in the back at the collar. 
I didn't film myself doing that because you already saw how you do it. Just, you know, hide the fur on the inside and then stitch it together. Now I'm using pins to fold all of this over. I'm actually folding over more than I did on the last one because this fabric is a lot longer. Like the actual nape of the fur is longer. And so the collar looked a lot bigger, which I didn't like. So I folded over probably about like an inch and a half on both sides. And now I'm just stitching it down. I also figured out like a much faster way to stitch this than I did on the last one, which saved a lot of time. And it's basically doing those multiple stitches. So you go like in, out, in, out, basically as long as the length of your needle and then pull it. And that will do like an inch and a half to two inches at a time. Once you have a good section done, take out your pins and you can see it's nice and lightly tacked. You're not going to see the stitches anywhere because the fur is so long, it's going to hide it. But you could go through with a needle and kind of make sure to pull anything out that seems stuck. Now I'm adding on my magnets. I did the same thing. I tried on the collar with a couple different jackets and sort of split the difference between all of them to figure out where the best place was to actually put on my magnets so that it's going to work on multiple jackets. Again, E6000, pop them on and just give them some time to dry. Quick interruption. I just wanted to explain something. If you guys want to do the version like this that is um, has like a lining fabric, you're not going to see it. But if you want to do it, because it's definitely much more legit, what you're going to do is basically take the pattern that you created, create a new pattern from that that is a minimum of one inch smaller all the way around. Then when you take your faux fur, right side of your faux fur with your lining fabric, right side of your lining fabric, and you put them together and sew them, the fact that the lining fabric is smaller is going to curl and pull the fur around the backside so that from the side, all you see is fur, right? You want that curl. That's the reason why on this one, right, on this guy, that's why I folded it over. The fold over is super important so that no matter which direction you're looking at it from, you're not seeing that fabric backing. But if you want to line it, you could cut out two pieces of, of fur and do it that way, or you could do fur and save the money and just do a liner fabric like denim, something nice and strong. As long as it's smaller, it will curl it in. Okay, that is it. Now it's time for the cuffs. Okay, so you can see all I did is grab my fabric and sort of just like wrap it around my arm to see how wide I wanted the actual cuff. Right? So I like looked at my fabric, I figured out how wide, then I folded it in half and cut it so that I would end up with double the length, obviously, so it's twice as wide. So when I fold it, it turns into the length I want. So you're gonna fold it face to face, and again, you're gonna tuck the fur inside as you are actually doing this. For this particular version, I pulled out my sewing machine. So I am gonna sew this with a uh, regular sewing machine, but you could still needle and thread this whole sucker if you want. Again, just make sure to hide it all on the inside. And just for like frame of reference, you could do this for all of the faux fur collars if you want. You could cut out two pieces of each collar, flip them face to face, sew them all the way around, and then flip it inside out, and you would have a double-sided collar. Here is the long piece for our cuff. You're just gonna sew it all the way down, which I did. And now I'm gonna flip it inside out. And basically what I have is a giant tube of double-sided fur. So I wanted to wrap it around my wrist to see how tight it I wanted it. So I actually grabbed the jacket I planned on wearing with this. I wrapped it around and made it tight. You want it tight because that's actually how it's gonna stay on. We're not gonna put magnets on this guy. We're just gonna put it on nice and tight. So it basically just like, like a scrunchie almost. It just like hugs your wrist and stays on top. That's one that I've already made right there. Look at it. I mean, it's legit. That's like, that's the real deal. Okay, so this is how you do it. I cut my length and I'm gonna fold it back inside out, but only halfway, right? Halfway now. So I've got the fold there, you can see, right? I've got the fur on the inside, there's my seam. So you wanna make sure to line up your seams. So I folded it halfway, but the right sides are facing together. It's gonna be kind of confusing, but I hope this makes sense. Tuck all the fur in, right? Tuck all the fur in, and now you're gonna pin, and you're gonna sew this all the way around, except for like a two inch gap, just enough that you can then flip it inside out. I know it's confusing right now, but this is actually the seam that's connecting the two sides together so it becomes a cylinder. It's just folded in a weird way. There's my opening, right? So I sewed it all the way around, didn't even bother changing my thread per use. And now I'm gonna flip this guy inside out. Once it's flipped inside out, I end up with just a tiny opening. And once I flip it again, hiding the opening on the inside, you don't even see it. So yes, of course, grab a needle and thread, close up that opening, but frankly, you're never gonna see it because it's hidden on the inside. 
I hope that made sense. All right, last one. I wanted to show you guys how to do this little collar with the matching cuffs on a leather jacket, the sort of black on black I loved. So I took my collar and I and I traced it, but it wasn't laying flat in the back. So I kind of put the, the jacket on and straightened up that seam in the back and I cut four pieces. Now, this is how you guys would do it if you want the double-sided where it's, you know, fur all the way around. You cut two pieces of your right, two pieces of your left, and you sew the two of them together, leaving the middle, which is where they're gonna be connected, leaving the middle open. So top, side, bottom, leave the middle open. Now you're gonna flip it inside out and you'll see what it ends up looking like. There you go. Two collars that are uh, flipped, double-sided, perfectly flipped both ways. I put it on my jacket and kind of tried to figure out where I would want the magnet. And I realized, well, since this is like double-sided, I can actually hide the magnet on the inside. So I flipped it inside out, took out my pin and just marked where it was and added my magnets right to the inside. That way you're never going to see it. It's going to be totally hidden. But because these magnets are so strong, they're going to work. Now again, here's the cuff, right? So I take my fabric, I fold it in half, I sew it down the side, I mark how wide I want them and there's my two cuffs. Now I connect them together. I do that full circle all the way around and once I flip it inside out, I've got my double cuffs and we're done. That's it, you guys. That's it. I can't wait to show you what they look like on. I will tell you that I was only 80% excited until I like planned out all my outfits and actually modeled them and looked in the mirror and was like, dang, these are actually pretty cool. So now I'm really, really stoked. I hope that you guys will do this one. If you guys are brand new to the channel, I hope that you will subscribe and join me. Great DIYs. Next week is amazing. I am doing a no sew, no seam wrap skirt. This thing is so great. It's such a simple technique. Um, and I'm obsessed with the way they're, they're coming out. So I'm really excited. I'll see you guys next week. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Mwah! Enjoy the fashion show. I'm gonna tell you that I love you 100 times a day. You'll get tired of my voice. That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I miss you. I'll miss you if you go Yes, I'm gonna let you know Just how much I tell your mama I tell your papa too I'm gonna let everyone know About my love So I really hope you love me too Yeah, I really hope you love me too Yeah, yeah.